Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today I want to talk a little bit about Network Bridge versus Mac VLANs on LexD containers. So Network Bridges have been around for almost 25 years and they're defined as any device that connects two Ethernet segments together and forwards layer two Mac addresses. Usually a bridge is a switch which can be implemented in either hardware or software. So if you have a little five port Netgear switch around your house, it is basically a bridge because anything communicating from one of its ports to another of its ports is using bridge mode to do that. So a bridge learns MAC addresses by checking the frame headers of communicating hosts on the network. Bridges deal with both simple and complex networks to tie multiple network segments together. A MAC VLAN is a bridge that doesn't need to start learning anything because it already knows all of the MAC addresses on the network. MAC VLAN al allows multiple layer two MAC addresses on a physical ethernet interface or a th single ethernet adapter. VLANs provide network segmentation services traditionally only provided by a router on a LAN. MAC VLAN allows sub interfaces to be configured on a parent interface with its own randomly generated MAC addresses. A limitation to MAC VLAN interfaces is that they cannot directly communicate back with their parent host. This means that a LexD container cannot ping its LexD parent host. So by default, a Docker or a LexD container communicate on a private address range and they use a private network address translation or NAT network to allow communication between containers. LexD containers communicate on this private network through a bridge normally designated as LexDBR0 by default. LexD containers can be bridged to either your main LAN or to a VLAN. So what's the difference? Well, a LexD bridge has the advantage of allowing the container to communicate back to the LexD host if required. A LexD bridge only communicates through a parent interface to the untagged VLAN or to a default VLAN defined by a network switch port profile. Mac VLAN can communicate through a single network adapter to any configured VLAN as long as the attached switch port has a port profile that allows communication to the particular VLAN. So Mac VLAN is leaner and sometimes it's faster than a bridged interface, but it does not allow direct communication with the parent host. Some hardware interfaces restrict the number of allowed Mac VLAN devices. So here's a picture of a LAN and it's got two Linux hosts on it. The Linux host here on the left is only got bridged LexD containers on it and the host on the right only has Mac VLAN containers on it. Now, you could have combined bridge containers and Mac VLAN containers on the same host, but just for clarity, I divided them out because I do that all the time uh, in terms of placing them on the same host, that is. So in this case, we have 192.168.1.10 and 1.20 and 1.30, which are three LexD containers. They're bridged through a common bridge. They go through one Ethernet interface. They're all in the same address range. Over here on the right, we've got a implementation using Mac VLAN. So we've got three VLANs, VLAN 100, VLAN 50, and VLAN 200. So we've got three VLANs and three address ranges, 100.10, 50.10, and 200.10. And yet they all communicate through a different or through the same Ethernet interface on the same cable. So that's the thing about a VLAN. With VLANs, 
you can have multiple networks that run on the same cable and even on the same adapter. Now, on the standard bridge LAN, had we wanted to communicate with two networks on uh, the uh, same VLAN, what we would have had to have done is we would have had to have had a second Ethernet adapter and that Ethernet adapter would have had a switch port profile to talk to the other VLAN and then the containers could have been bridged to that VLAN uh, without using Mac VLAN. But that's kind of convoluted. I have done that before. So then, how do you create a bridged LexD container? We use the command LexC profile create, and I'm going to call my bridge profile cleverly bridge profile. And then I'm going to do a LexC profile edit bridge profile. And these are the commands that go in it. The parent QVS0 is the name of the Ethernet adapter on my host. And the NIC type is bridged. And then we have an end of file marker down here that ends out that edit session. And then we're going to launch uh, Lexi launch Ubuntu. And it's going to be uh, the name of the host is cleverly going to be bridged host, which uses the bridge profile. And we have some other switches down here. And that's all it takes to create a bridge container that will get an address from the LAN on the network. So then we have the concept of creating a Mac VLAN LexD container. I'm going to create a profile called untagged. I just decided to create it on the untagged network as opposed to on a particular tagged numbered VLAN. And so the uh, command looks very similar. I'm going to create or I'm going to edit the profile untagged and I'm going to put these in these commands in it. And you notice it's pretty much identical. We're still talking to the same parent, except that the NIC type is Mac VLAN. And when we go to create the container, we do a Lexi launch. Again, I wanted the container to be Ubuntu. I'm cleverly calling the host Mac VLAN host. And I'm going to uh, use the untagged profile. And we have the same switches that I had on the bridge container. So now let's actually go out and see how this is done. So here we are at the command prompt on my LexD host, and we're going to say LexC list, and you can see I have one instance of something running called calendar. If I do a LexC profile list, you can see that I have a few custom profiles also set up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create our bridge profile. And we do that with a Lexi profile create bridge profile. And we're going to do a little bit of a change from what we went over in the slides in that I'm going to um, go ahead and accept the input for my profile via the keyboard with this command, which I'll put in the show notes. And I'm also making one change over the slides in that I went ahead and included this section to create the root disk definition. And what that allows me to do is it just allows me to use the uh, one profile for uh, bridge profile without using the default profile also. So we simply have a LexD launch, Ubuntu 20.04, Bridged host is going to be the name of the host, and the profile is going to be bridge profile, and then I have several switches off on the end here. So we're creating the bridge host from my Ubuntu 20.04 template that I have. It's a custom template I had created that has um, some other settings in it, a user account, and that type of thing. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and create the untagged profile for the Mac VLAN demonstration also. So we go ahead and create it. And again, 
like the bridged definition, I am also including the definition for the root disk. So when I launch the container, I am creating the container with only dash dash profile untagged and I'm calling this host Mac VLAN host. But I'm also creating it from the Ubuntu dash 2004 container. Okay, so if we do Alexi profile list, you can now see that we have the bridge profile that we added in. And you can also see we have the untagged profile that we added in. And if I do Alexi image list, you can see the Ubuntu-2004 container that I use, which is a custom container. And it basically says it's an Ubuntu 2004 with Scott account with some other things added onto it as well. Now, if I do Alexi list, you can see that we have bridged host and Mac VLAN host. Bridged host is running on 172.16.1.91, which is on my main LAN, and 172.16.1.193, which is also on my main LAN. So both of them got an address via DHCP. So now if we do a C exec bridged host bosh, the bridged host, if we do an if config, we can see 172.16.1.91, and we can ping 172.16.1.57, which is the host that this container is running on. And since it's a bridge container, it can reach the host, as I mentioned in the slides. So let's exit out of this container. Let's do Alexi list again. Let's do Alexi exec this time with Mac VLAN host Bosch. We do an if config. There it is running at 172.16.1.193. And now let's do a ping of its parent which is 172.16.1.57. And this ping will not work because a Mac VLAN host is unable to reach its parent. So in summary, LexD containers default to being created on a private address range that bridges to your LAN. LexD containers can be created that bridge a container to the mainland, providing them a LAN address. And LexD profiles can be created that use a Mac VLAN bridge to either the untagged LAN or any VLAN on your network. Mac VLAN containers cannot communicate directly with their host. Mac VLAN can be used with LexD, Docker, and virtual machine containers Although in this presentation, we focused specifically on LexD Mac VLAN profiles and LexD bridge profiles. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.